Hello everyone, in this video, we are going to talk about how to use Power BI to access Amazon Athena database to get data. Today's problem statement is, I have a set of tables and views in Athena database. How can I use Power BI to get those data? So in this video, we'll have two parts. The first part is for AWS admin to grant the access to your end users. And the second part of the video is for the Power BI developers or the business analysts to use the ODBC connector to access Athena. So you can tell today's video, we have two segregate skill sets. So I will put in the bookmark in the, in the timeline. Feel free to use those features to jump to the parts that you need. Let's get started. Before we proceed, there are a couple of things to consider. The first thing is you want to give the least privilege security because on some support page and some website, people say, please, you can grant the full access for Amazon Athena, Glue, and S3. This is correct because when you're granting the full access, the user won't receive any access denied error and they can access everything. That is good if you are doing some POC or just doing some testing. But if you give them too many full access, later uh, the security key if they get lost and also can be some serious security issue. So this is something that you should consider. Of course, the easiest solution is to grant the full access for everything. This will absolutely solve the issue. But for the long term consideration, we don't recommend you to give the full access at all. OK, the second thing is we already know that Athena requires the output bucket to be set up for user to dump the query results. So in this case, please make sure you already have this Athena output bucket already there and also send the information to the end user. So in this demo, we are going to create one access key as an example. So before we go into the console, there's some very quick overview. Because in the Athena, there are so many cases, so we cannot go through everything. So we're just going to go through this a little bit on how the security works here. So we know that this is Athena. There are some ways that Athena can fit in the data. They can fit in from the glue, or they can get in from the AWS Lambda connector. So for each, for glue, there are some popular ones, and S3, DynamoDB, or DocumentDB, and other JDBC connectors. And for the Lambda part, there are a lot of uh, options that you can use for the Lambda connectors that are like CloudWatch Log, CloudWatch Matrix, and some other popular databases like SQL, Postgres, and Redis. So all of them have three pieces. The first is a data source, either it's S3 or like Redshift. The second on the catalog, or I call it connector, is either Glue or Lambda. And the third piece is the Amazon Query Engine. So if this looks confusing to you, you can think this as going to a furniture store. So the data source you can think is as a huge data warehouse, and there's a lot of furniture there you want to go pick up. And then you, you, if you want to buy a bed, what you are usually going to check, you check the catalog or check their website. They will tell you, hey, you can go into this aisle and this bin, and you can find it in the San Diego store. They have couples in stock. So you can use this to get the data. And you use Athena Query Engine, this is, sim this is similar as a checkout station to check out the data and deliver to your home. So this is all three pieces have all to be presented. If you lose any piece, your process cannot be finished. So in the console, what are they? So we can see here in the data source, this is your data source because each table it's going to connect to a data source. So first, you are going to grant the data source access to your end user. The second part is on here, is on the data catalog. This is by default glue. So you are going to grant glue access to the end user as well. If you're using Lambda connector, make sure the users can invoke Lambda. And the third piece is on the Athena query engine. Users can use this to save query and to execute query or stop query. So in the demo, we are going to use a very simple example as using the Amazon S3 as my data source. And I already built a table in there. So the Amazon S3 data source is actually a CloudTrail delivered log. 
is actually a GZ compressed file. So we already used that to build a simple Athena table. And we are going to grant this access to the end user. And my region here will be US East 1, and my output bucket will be a Matthew test bucket. And my glue database is default, and the user can create all the tables. Here, I'm going to give you the policies that we have been using and tested, so you can modify this for your own bucket. So the first one is the data source. In here, we give the get everything and list everything, which is a read-only access to our source data bucket. So I'm giving this to the bucket itself and also the path to these files. So on the catalog side, we give the glue get access, they can read everything, and but only on the catalog itself. So which here is you're going to swap your database in this in this block, and also in the orange block, you're going to give the table names that you want to grant to the user. If you want to grant all the tables, you just can give the star here. And the third thing is Athena query engine. In this query engine, there are two pieces. So the first one is on the query engine itself. So we give start query execution, stop query execution, and get query everything for this resource. But in the resource here, you can put in your works work group name. Usually by default, it is primary. And on the second piece, you also want to give the output bucket. In the output bucket, I usually give put object and get star. So later it can retrieve. And in the resource, I usually give the bucket name, location, and location slash star. And you can later see an example how I'm using that. Let's get started with a live demo. After logging into the console as an admin, I go to my IAM. I go to the user to create the access key. I click add user. In the username, I'm going to put in Athena demo. And I only need to grant them the programmatic access because this is for Power BI to access the data. Permissions, we are going to skip for now. Tags, I'm going to skip. And the review, done. After creating, I'm going to download the CSV. I'm going to save that and later to send to my end user. Let's start to grant the access. I have my Athena console and my IAM console open side by side so we can refer to some information. The first thing is on my data source. To find out the data source, I'm going to click the three dots next to my tables that I want to grant the access to the user. I click Show Properties. And in here, you will find the location. Let's go to the IAM console, click Add Inline Policy. Let's go to the JSON. And this resource will be this location that I just put in here. And of course, you can grant parent level folder so you can make sure they can access everything. And also you want to grant to the, to the bucket itself for the system to locate the folder location. And I'm going to click review policy to put in data. And I'm going to create the policy. Okay, this is the first piece. The second piece is on the glue. So the first thing is I'm going to check what is my database name. My database name here shows the default. And this is what I'm going to give to my user. And the second is what are the tables and views name that I want to grant to the user. If you want to grant everything under this database, you can just enter star. So I'm going to create another inline policy going to JSON and I'm going to paste my policy here. So you can see I give the glue get star. And first thing is I give the glue catalog itself. So which is this matching this part here. And the second is, what is the database? The database, I give the default. This is matching this default. And the third thing is, what are the table names? So for tables and views, I want to give everything under this default. So in here, I put in slash default and slash star to give every table under this database. So these are the pieces that I put in for the glue. And I click review, and I type in glue. And the second piece is done. The third piece is on the Athena. 
First, you should check out what is your group, what group name that you are going to give to the end user. In this case, it is my default primary. I'm going to click Add Permission, go into the JSON, and first thing is I'm going to give the Asina starts and stop query and the get query star here. And I'm going to give the resource. This resource primary here is looking up from this work group. And this is, a, this is a primary. This is the first piece. And for the second piece, it's on your output bucket. So I'm going to hit the settings here. And this is usually the one that you want to give to the end user. In my case, I want to put in the Matthew bucket and under a Cena folder. In the resource, I like to give the S3, the bucket itself, to look up for the bucket properties. And also, I'm going to give the folder itself, and they can put in everything under this folder. So I'm locking down into this folder access. And that is everything. I'm going to click Review Policy and put in Athena. Of course, this name is, you can name it whatever. And I'm going to create. create. And that is everything for the policies that are attaching to my user. Before we jump to the next session, you need to know that the Athena ODBC also supports instance profile as an authentication method. It's definitely a better authentication than access key because access key is just a string of username and password and has some security risk. So you can also use instance profile to authenticate your Athena user. So it requires the workspace or the Power BI gateway server has to be on the EC2. So in this case, you need to work with Power BI admin that set up the on-premises gateway. So the remaining steps are very easy. Basically, you are going to create an EC2 role and attach the same set of the policies that we discussed above. You then attach this new EC2 role onto the, onto the EC2. And in this case, when user in the ODBC settings, they can just select instance profile in the dropdown, which we will show later. And there was no need to create access key. So this is something that you need to know. But of course, it is conditional because they have to be on C2. All right, let's jump to the Power BI part.